so finally the first month of this new year 2020 is over and february has kicked in and i'm looking at the transit chart below this month looks to be very interesting quite a lot of things happening this month starting from the mid almost mercury getting retrograde but there are many other interesting things during this month because this is the month from when we can understand the transits of Jupiter and Saturn in more detail because they have now separated. Now their individual actions will give results, which means earlier also we could have seen, but November, December, January, Jupiter, Saturn were conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius, but now they are not conjunct, they have left. So one has entered the sign of Capricorn, its own sign. So finally, Saturn has entered after so many years, three decades almost. Therefore, whoever has prominent placements in the birth chart in the sign of Capricorn, like prominent planets like Sun, Moon, Ascendant, Ascendant Lord, or your Atma Karaka. This three years, the next three years is very, very, very crucial. It's very important because now you will feel that I need to work seriously regarding those areas, right? So whoever is having moon sign as Aquarius, Kumbarashi, their Sare Sati has started. And for uh, Scorpio, their Sare Sati has ended finally. Libra, Scorpio and Sagittarius. So finally when Saturn left Sagittarius, it now entered the third house from Scorpio. So Sare Sati for Scorpio is over. And for Capricorn and Sagittarius moon sign it is going on. For Sagittarius it is the last phase. And for moon sign Capricorn it is the peak phase, the main phase. And for Aquarius the first phase has started. And Jupiter Saturn has also changed nakshatras. Jupiter has entered Purva Ashada nakshatra. So currently on uh, it is it will be almost you know around 20 degrees when this month kick, kicks in and saturn is already in uttarashada nakshatra okay so i have not made videos on these two transits i will be making videos very soon so i will speak about these two uh, much in detail in those videos and apart from that uh, the Transit of uh, Venus is also very prominent here along with Mercury because um, this is happening in the sign of Aquarius, all right? This is a very important uh, placement for both Mercury and Venus. So if we go to the 1st February 2020 chart, then evening time I can see Sun is in 18 degrees of Capricorn, it's in Shravan Nakshatra. Moon is in Bharni Nakshatra. Mars is in Scorpio. Very important placement. Mercury has just entered Aquarius. Almost 3 degrees. Jupiter is in 1941. Purvashara. Venus 2843. It is about to go to Pisces. And Saturn is in 0059. Capricorn. Uttarashara. And yes, Mercury will be retrograde during this month. So that is also holding huge key significations because Mercury is also the lord of Revati Nakshatra and Venus will be passing through Revati Nakshatra. Revati Nakshatra is in the last degrees of Pisces. In fact, it is the last Nakshatra of the Zodiac. And it is one of the very beautiful nakshatras through which Venus will pass. And Venus obtains its peak, peak, peak exaltation 
in revati nakshatra so this nakshatra lord of the nakshatra where venus gets exalted which is mercury is becoming retrograde so this is very important there are many things which venus will teach us through mercury <laughs> mercury will not teach us directly because now he is he will function through venus which means because nakshatras are second level they are at level 2 so the planet it see it's like it appears as if the planet is doing things but actually the nakshatra lord is doing but you feel as if the planet is doing all right so therefore this transit is very important and now saturn has also changed the nakshatra so therefore the results that saturn has been giving throughout will now vary depending on where sun is transiting why sun because uttara shada is ruled by sun after all <laughs> and sun will be transiting in capricorn the first half and then it will be moving on to the sign of aquarius for the next last 15 days and also venus becomes important here during this month so because venus is the lord of purva shada nakshatra where jupiter has just entered so therefore venus will be in exaltation so now it's like saying uh, venus will show the colors through jupiter and mercury will throw show the colors through venus all right so and uh, ketu is also in uh, where is ketu now ketu 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 ah ketu is in fourth pada of mula nakshatra so ketu is in its own nakshatra okay and rahu as usual he is in ardra nakshatra he is dead on in ardra of course and many people ask me about uranus neptune and pluto so uranus is forward in forward motion in 8 degree of aries in ashwini third pada neptune is in 22 degrees of purva bhadra pada forward motion and pluto is in 29 degrees of sagittarius in uttara shada forward again so quite a lot of forward energy so this month uh, is very crucial in matter of the sign uh, the three these three planets i would say one is sun the other one is mercury the other one is venus because Uh, these three are the lords of the prominent uh, nakshatras where the main the prominent planets are transiting okay so for example uh, revati is mercury then purva shada is venus and uttara shada is the sun so on this month will be prominent for you it will be good or bad or whatever you call it hmm. to the extent sun and mercury and venus are important in your horoscope which means if you have exalted planets like if one of the three planets sun mercury or venus is exalted in your horoscope then this month will be very prominent for you because now these energies are getting activated through these planets and also if you have a debilitated planet and one among these three are is debilitated then also this month will be very prominent it can teach you a lot of lessons it can it can tell you so many things which you you would have never come to know by the way of exaltation or own moon own sign or moon tricot okay so if you want to understand what february holds for us we we have to we have to closely have a look at these three planets how they are placed in the horoscope and as usual uh, if you are new to the channel then please uh, subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who want to know about february and of course the predictions as i say i reinstantiate like always the predictions which i am giving in this video they are not actually predictions they are just like uh, some broad principles to understand what could happen in your life okay because ultimately you will run a 
dasha and ultimately the predictions are based on the dashas not transits okay transits can give you a flavor of the dashas manifesting so if you are running uh, dashas of especially mahadasha of sun mercury or venus then this month is very important for you and also if you are running the antar dashas so of any of these three combined so basically if you are running like a uh, sun venus mercury venus sun mercury sun mercury mercury sun venus mercury sun mercury venus <laughs> So then the, also this month will be very prominent for you because now what do I mean when I say this month is very prominent? This does not mean that the rest of the months of the year are useless. What I mean to say is this month will act uh, like that uh, like that ignition of fire. One fire will come and then it will spread all over. So fire doesn't mean that uh, your life will be ruined. It means the changes that will happen, especially uh, the months February and March are quite stable months. In fact, to some extent, March, uh, April also, and the most intense month of the year is going to be May actually, because in May, uh, there are so many things which are happening actually. Venus is also getting retrograde, Jupiter is getting retrograde, Saturn is getting retrograde. And then this year, at the end, again, you have Mars, who is getting retrograde, okay. So then at September this year, Rahu and Ketu are changing signs. So therefore, May month uh, will act as the trigger for all the events that uh, will happen in your, this upcoming year, okay, this year, whole, the rest of the 11 months. So, <clears throat> Keep a watch on the things that you are planning to do in the month of May. Remember that they, they have to be done properly because they will hold a lot of say for you during the year. And this month, February, will act as the trigger for the month of May because the <clears throat> retrogression of Jupiter and Saturn, which is happening around that time, around May. So they they will be uh, they will be starting to show their effects by february okay and especially the ashada nakshatras are very beautiful nakshatras if they are used for purificatory purposes so purificatory purposes mean suppose uh, there are certain things in your life which you are uh, planning to get rid of okay <clears throat> they can be anything they can be some certain things in your home which you don't need they can be certain appliances which you don't use electric appliances okay or it could be decluttering your home your house your room or your entire building or it could also mean cutting out some people from your life who who always pull you down, who always denigrate you, who always insult you, criticize you for no good reason. And they always try to paint themselves as very superior to you. So if, if there are people like these in your life, then you it is highly essential that you get rid of these people. Although that's not a very good attitude, but the thing is, we cannot let others ruin our life like this so therefore we must take control of our life and we should only associate with those people who encourage us and in whose association we feel encouraged why why do i say this about people in general because although venus will move to pisces but this current this month starts with venus and mercury in aquarius okay and eventually sun will also move to aquarius then mercury will go retrograde and again the whole time he is almost in aquarius so the thing is aquarius represents the original 11th house which is what it is the association as in scripture this in a sangha Okay, Sanjat Sanjayate Kama, Kama Krodho Vijayate, as Krishna says in Gita. So, whatever desires you have, they are a reflection of the association that you have. Okay, so for example, if 
if you are trying to control certain bad habits so for example if you have habits like eating meat which is very detrimental for your spiritual progress and your material well-being also uh, that can totally ruin you and throw you off the track and uh, if that is your situation and you try to give it up but you also have to give up the association of those friends or family members or relatives who always pull you down into these animalistic activities like eating meat or drinking alcohol or smoking or watching adult material in the internet so you cannot say that oh i will stay with these people and then my habits will go away no that cannot happen so the ashadas have beautiful energy which helps us as purva shada is apas purification basically so this month is like the tapasya which we should do for the upcoming year especially okay and especially <clears throat> uh, during this month if you can visit kanchipuram it's very good kanchipuram is a small town in uh, tamil nadu india south india and it's near to chennai also so if you are in south india you would be very well aware of kanchipuram that it is known as a tapa mandap so it's a place to do tapasya and generally there if you go you can uh, do the seven day fasting you know seven day fasting means not that seven days you don't eat anything because then uh, you may be hospitalized seven day fasting means uh, for seven days in the morning you you should reach there on a saturday because this fasting has to be started from sunday okay sunday morning not mondays please for god sake it's sunday okay so for that you have to at least reach by friday or saturday so when you reach there then what you can do is uh, on sunday morning you can start the fast no eating no drinking and then when the sun sets at around 5:36 then you uh, eat okay and for till the next saturday you should be doing this if possible and uh, it is also recommended that if you are doing this fast in the la in those seven days in the evening which you take the food that you take that should be ekadashi food okay ekadashi means there should not be any grains okay so you can google and find stuff in youtube ekadashi food you know what is allowed in ekadashi so for example varai is allowed these are indian stuff which i am saying then sabudana is allowed then rajgira tea is allowed and then all fruits you can take no? so you could try to do ekadashi in those days seven days that will be very auspicious for you if you try to do and especially if you go to kanchipuram or any other divya desham in south india then you could always chant this mantra om namo narayana you can always chant this mantra in fact uh, there are people who uh, chant 108 rounds of this mantra no? 108 rounds not times so one round is 108 times so 108 into 108 yes almost <laughs> so that many number of times in one day you chant this mantra so if you start from the morning and till the night hopefully you will finish it okay so this is something very beautiful you can do or at least you can do for one day okay if even if you can't do for seven days at least for one day you can do that will be very beneficial for you because that will really cleanse your consciousness because uh, whatever austerities you do <clears throat> in kanchi from that eels affects by 1000 10000 times more because lord brahma had himself done penance there and <clears throat> lord vishnu had appeared himself in fact lord vishnu was the one who told lord brahma to go and do penance okay there because then it then the results are amazing so therefore you can go there and do it it's very good if you can go in february itself and it, uh, the climate will also be very good in february <clears throat> so if somebody is from the west they can also come they can also do and 
apart from that uh, you can also do some uh, worship related to lord shiva also because this uh, rahu energy is there in ardhara okay so you could also visit a place like uh, places like banaras okay so banaras varanasi it's a very beautiful place in uttar pradesh india north india for those who don't know so there you can go and do some puja in the dashashramit ghat okay that that is a very powerful place i had uh, i had the great fortune to <clears throat> to be present there uh, september 2018 and it's october first week sorry 2018 and i had great 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 spiritual happiness bliss pleasure whatever you call it by going to banaras or you could also visit uh, mahakaleshwar ujjain temple there you could go and visit the bhasmarti which is which is fabulous all right don't miss the bhasmarti so these are the things you can do you could go for cleansing and as gradually this month unfolds you will see the exaltation of venus <clears throat> also giving shape so if you have uh, your prominent planets uh, in libra or taurus then also this month will be very important for you because uh, you will understand that happiness only comes by giving actually not by taking so the more you want to take the more unhappy you will be the more you want to give the more happy you will be all right so therefore also because mercury will be retrograde and again uh, in aquarius so therefore this month is it is a very important month if you want to you know sign some contract or any, any anything very prominent which you want to do okay so so try to avoid uh, signing anything signing very 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 important contracts when mercury is retrograde because generally i have seen if you sign and then later on somehow that doesn't happen and <clears throat> yeah that bounces back uh, but again as i said good or bad that will depend on your own horoscope okay so <laughs> there are uh, billions of people in this world and they will sign billion contracts so it's not that for everybody it will be bad or good or anything like that okay but this is just a word of caution i am giving from my side and do not take them as absolute because i don't know what your horoscope is what which dashas you are running and now uh, i know you will write in the comments you know my jupiter is in second house mercury is here this is in that nakshatra what will happen so uh, life would be very simple and easy if it was so easy to answer astrology queries like this because we can only answer queries after we see the entire horoscope okay so we check the sun moon this is for the beginners of course but it's very surprising sometimes that many people they claim to be seniors in astrology by spending you know 5 years 6 years 7 years but still they keep asking the same questions people ask that oh my uh, jupiter and venus are conjunct what will happen well anything can happen there are so many pros and cons it depends on which houses they are ruling where they are placed which sign who is more powerful jupiter or venus so there are so many pros and cons so what happens in your life depends on your own horoscope it will not depend solely on the transits all right thank you very much and if you want a consultation from me regarding your personalized horoscope then you can always go to the description section down in the videos to find my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him